Hello everyone, welcome to this short session on solvent equations with indices. Now some of you might have met logarithms from core 2 and they can of course be used um, for solving equations where you've got powers but we're not going to need them today. The questions have rather convenient numbers. We will just need the following index law to help us. Now if we look at example A, we should be able to spot the connection between the number 36 and the number 6. Indeed, you can capture 36-ness using the number 6. If we start with the number 6, we can of course square that number and then we have the property of 36ness. So we can we can capture um, 36 using 6 as our base. And if I just wrap that now in brackets, and I'm going to just start reading through the equation again. Now we need to do 36 to the power of x, and then that equals, well, I'm not going to change anything on this side. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to rewrite our numbers in a more convenient way so that all our numbers have the same bases and then we should be able to just compare our powers at the end that's what we're aiming for and we're going to use this rule now just to help us tidy up here so using the rule we can rewrite this as just 6 to the 2x Of course, now, because we've got the same base, we've got the 6 on either side, we can just compare our powers. There we've got a 2x on our 6, and there we've got a 3x minus 7. So it must mean that those two expressions are equal to one another. So we've got a simple linear equation which we can now solve. So I think I will add 7 to both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And that gives me 7 equals x. I suppose it's better to write x equals 7. So I suppose we could check that. Um, going back to the original, we've, we've got 36 raised to the x. We now think that x is 7. So what it's saying is that 36 to the 7 must be equal to 6 raised to the well, 3 times 7 minus 7, 14. So perhaps if you've got a calculator, you could verify that. But, oh, I don't have a calculator at hand, but if we look at 36, again, we could just write that as 6 squared, and just, just see if this makes sense. And of course, it, it does, again, using the rule above, 6 squared, we could write like that. So it, it does seem to make sense there. Looking at B, um, much trickier. Again, we're not going to use logarithms or anything like that. We're just going to spot a connection between a 9 for at least 9 and 27. And we can rewrite both of those numbers using 3 as our base. But before getting to there, Let's deal with this fraction here. We don't like the fact we've got a fraction. So we could rewrite this as 9 to the power of negative 1. That's the only thing I'm going to change. So a ninth, I'm just rewriting it. So let's just put this in brackets. There's your ninth that we're going to raise to the x. And I'm not going to change anything on this side. Let's just do one step at a time. Next, I'm going to just deal with this, just tidy this up. Using our rule, we can write that as 9 to the negative 1 times x, so minus x. I'm not going to change anything over here. Now let's just capture 9-ness and 27 a different way, using 3 as our base. So 9 we could capture as... 3 raised to the power of 2 and put that in brackets and then, that's and then you've got your 9 there 
and we need to raise that to the power of negative x and then capture 27 a different way we can write that as 3 cubed put that in brackets there's your 27 and look at the line above you're required to raise that now to the 3x minus 10 and again we're going to use this index law to help us tidy this up so here multiplying those powers together we've got 3 to the minus 2x and on the right hand side we've got to be careful here because we're going to multiply these powers together but of course we're going to have 3 bracket 3x minus 10 apologies I can't write a 10 without it doing that but we've got to multiply those brackets out so it's 3 times all of that so we're going to have 3 raised to the power of 3 times 3x, 9x, but also 3 times 10. So 30, and it was actually a positive and a negative. So now we can make our comparison. This power must be the same as this power. So we can conclude here that therefore minus 2x equals 9x minus 30 and I'm going to add 30 to both sides and I'm going to add 2x to both sides now dividing both sides by 11 gives us what x is okay that will do as my answer I'm perfectly satisfied with an improper fraction just one more example for you Let's look at this, and again, you're looking at 8 and 2, and you're thinking, what can act as a common base? And of course, 8, we could capture with 2 as our base, if we just attach a little 3 there. That is 8. Well, I'm now required, looking at the line above, to raise 8 to the x plus 2. And I'm going to leave that 2 alone, that's fine. So using our rule again, we can work with this. But again, we've got to be careful with our, with our brackets. It's going to be 3 times x plus 2. We're going to times both of them. So what that will give is 2 to the 3x. And here's where you've got to be careful. It's 3 times 2, so 6. Now, throughout all of these problems, we've just ended up doing a comparison at the end. So it would be convenient if we just had this on the left-hand side and we took this to the right-hand side. Now we can just do our comparison. That must equal that. And so, therefore, we've got 3x plus 6 equaling x. Take x off of both sides. And I suppose minus 6x, sorry, minus 6 from both sides, and divide both sides by 2. So uh, the questions are, are rather convenient. Um, they Here we've got 2 and 8, so we could, we could write it with 2 as our base. Here we kind of had 9s and 27s, so we had 3 as a possible base. And it, again, uh, here 6 and 36 so we could use 6 as a base so the questions are, are very convenient numbers um, so we can actually just use that index law to help us if that wasn't the case and we had more complicated numbers then we'd probably need logarithms which we meet in C2